Legacy of Destruction is going to shake up the meta once again as it will introduce a brand new tier 1 archetype into the TCG. And that deck is going to be Tenpai. And let me tell you all about it. What we're looking at here is a potential Tenpai deck list. Now, Tenpai is actually two archetypes mixed together. The Tenpai cards and the Sangen cards. They are meant to work together. It's just that because of this naming clause, not every card can search every card. It's similar to how there's the Phantom Knights and the Phantom Knights. Small distinction, which will be important in some understanding of the deck. However, it is perfectly fluid as a strategy still, and we'll get into that. Let's go through the seven new cards, understand exactly what they do. Now we've got three main deck monsters. The first one we're gonna go over is Tenpai Dragon by Dora. It's a level three fire dragon. They're all gonna be fire dragons here. This card is normal or special summon. You can take a Sangan spell the trap from your deck and either add it to your hand or set it. Both of your spell cards are going to be Sangan cards. So all, all of intents and purposes, this is Stratos. Only use the effect once return. Uh, you take no battle damage involving your fire dragons. And once returned during the battle phase, quick effect, you can synchro summon monsters using this card to control. Yeah, this is cool. They all have this ability as well. So you'll be able to synchro bunch during the battle phase. Almost like a Yang Zing, but offensive instead of defensive. Next up, we got Tenpai Dragon Fudora. Also level three dragon fire. The other one is not going to be level three, but uh, otherwise fire dragon stat stays the same. And this card is normal or special summoned or the start of the damage step. If a monster battles, you can target level four lower fire dragon on your grave. So that'll be your entire main deck archetype and special summon it. Only use the effect once per turn. Uh, your fire monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. So this is important where if you need to attack this guy, get an attack in with this guy and then trigger its own ability, it won't die. Uh, and then obviously with the other one comboed as well, you won't take battle damage, but that's less important. Uh, and then also once a turn during the battle phase, you can quick effect immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon. So yeah, again, they'll have this clause, neat. And then last up for our monster lineup is Tenpai Dragon Zongdora. Once per turn during the battle phase, quick effect synchro, neat again, all this ability. Uh, and this one here actually is a tuner, important to note. This is the tuner of the archetypes, the synchro summons, Makes sense. Not you don't have to play some random tuners to get this to, to function. If you control a fire dragon monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Nice. Good extender. Now does it do anything else, right? Because for it to be a premium extender, we want our free body to also give us something else, not just summon itself. And luckily it does that. At the start of the damage step, if a monster battles, you can special one level four or lower fire dragon monster from your deck. So if you don't already have your Fedora on field, you can summon the Fedora and then you can't be sure by battle and you got set up here and this should kind of start to click what deck this is this is a battle phase deck you're synchroing during the battle phase you're getting effects during the battle phase that being said battle phase decks typically aren't that good so before we reach any conclusions on the quality of the deck let's continue reading though because maybe we'll make it up with the rest of the cards we got brimming sangen manor yes yeah, so now we switch away from the tempai cards over to the sangen cards field spell your fire dragons you control unaffected by your opponent's activated effects during your main phase one that is incredible this means that Appalooza, SP, all those things will not be hitting your Tenpais during the main phase. And once you get to the battle phase, now they're quick effects to Synchro. So you can start dodging some of the target type effects, which is pretty good, uh, as well as you get to connect attacks relatively safely. This can be targeted itself, so kind of like the Spiral Resort or whatever. Uh, they can SP banish the Sangin Manor, and that would be, you know, the smart play if you're playing against Tenpai. However, obviously hitting a spell versus hitting a monster that's committed via normal summon is a lot less valuable. You're pretty much just trading one for one. So yeah, I mean, this card is really good, but it gets better. It is very much like Spider Resort because during your main phase, you can add Tempai Dragon, read extra your hand and then discard a card. Yeah, I guess a little bit worse than Resort, but Resort is one of the best field spells ever printed. So fantastic. And then also this card is destroyed during the battle phase. You can try to drag it synchro control and its attack becomes doubled. You'll see why this matters. And then we got Sangen Kaiman, quick play spell. And if it was activated outside of the battle phase, you get one of the following effects. And if it's used in the battle phase, you can apply both of them in sequence. One of the options, add a level four lower fire dragon next to your hand. And then second effect, special a fire dragon from your hand. So you can use either or in the main phase, but what we're really using it for here is in the battle phase. It's pretty much teleport, which is nuts. Uh, important to know here, it says you can only activate one saying in common per turn. It doesn't say use. And why that matters is if we play into negates like Baron to floor, if they negate this in the battle phase and you have a second one, you can use it. Very, very big difference. Now, there's also two extra cards to go over, and that is the level seven Sangen Rise Dragon Biden Dragon. Uh, and you'll see here the dragon part should ring a bell to Trident Dragon, which plays in with the theme. You'll see it on my extra deck as well. It requires a dragon tuner and a non tuner dragon, so again, archetype. And if this card is synchro summoned, you can target a fire dragon in your grave and special summon it. 
Also, you are locked into dragons for the rest of the turn. Only use the effect once per turn, all right? And if three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, special summon this card from your grave, and then you can destroy a spell trap on the field, including your field spell, which will then double the attack of a monster. Uh, I know this one is a tuner, so when you have a second one of your level three non-tuners in the field, you can synchro that off plus this to make a 10. We press forward, and the last one here is level 10, so the alternative to Trident Dragon. We got Sangin, Super Dragon, Transcend Dragon. I, these names are a mouthful, but who knows how, what they'll be in the TCG. If this card is synchro something to change all monsters on the field to attack position, which could help you kill them. All your opponent's monsters must attack if able. Uh, and then all your opponents will activate cards or effects during the battle phase. Ooh, there's the kicker. Uh, this is one where if you can get this out during the battle phase, they'll now have protection uh, in the main phase from your field spell, and then this will lock them out in the battle phase. Now, getting to this part is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, so it's not just a given that they can't prevent this from happening, but if this connects, the game feels like it's just over because this is this is a bomb. And then it keeps on going there. If three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your graveyard, and then you can destroy a card on the field. So again, you can hit your own field spell here, uh, and then double the attack of a monster, or you can just pop anything and keep swinging 3k. Uh, and important to note is the Trident Dragon is a card you were going to be using in this deck. It is not part of the theme technically, but it's very clear from the design of this deck that this was intended around what was the retrain of Trident Dragon, which is also a level 10 Fire Dragon with 3000 attack. Uh, acquires a Dragon type tuner and a non tuner Dragon type monster. It really lines up properly. Must be synchro summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. When this card is synchro summoned, target up two cards uh, you control, destroy those targets, and if you do, for each destroyed card, it gains additional attack. So you can see here, if you pop your field spell with Trident Dragon, you double its attack, and now it can attack two or three times as a 6,000 attack monster. If you've noticed a trend here, this deck swings up a lot of damage. So let me show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. This is a sample play you do when you go second. Say your opponent is an empty field, you had four hand traps and you stop them from playing. Or you just had anything, doesn't matter. We use our field spell here. We're going to search our by door. This is the Stratos in the deck. Uh, you have to discard a card for this. I think I forgot to, or what did I do? I just didn't discard. Ignore that. You're supposed to discard a card. <laughs> uh, but anyways, you get to search the, the Kaiman now, your, your e -telly. So you connect for 1700. Great, you get to attack. And then you special from deck now, because you control, uh, sorry, because of the battle phase, you get to use the add and then special from hand. Technically plays into draw, but yes, now we get the Zhangdora out. This will summon from deck when we attack as well. So we're going to swing for 15 and special again, and we get the last one out. Attack for 16. You can see we're already getting good amounts of damage in here, but say we're under prosperity or the head bodies up to start blocking. We keep going. We synchro summon next and we summon our level seven synchro, our Bident Dragon, which will then summon one back from the grave. And we're going to summon back level three here. It's important that we need the threes to keep synchroing. Now we can attack with these monsters, right? Because we just summoned two more monsters keep getting in damage. That's important to note, we're already over the three attack threshold, so the synchro monsters for the Sangin monsters will revive themselves if you want to now. You just have to put them in the grave. Can we do that? Well, the two more quick effect synchros, because we used this one so far, we still have this and this. Now we can use this synchro and uh, make this one. All right, so now everything just turned to attack if there was anything that wasn't an attack already, but it's fine. I also can't use effects now in the battle phase, but at this point, if you've gone this far, it, it, the writing's on the wall for them. The game is over. Uh, anyways, you push for 3k, uh, then you get to bring this back out, attack for 26. You can see the damage is crazy. Uh, and then you can use this one uh, effect because something battled at the start of the damage step. Back level four lower fire dragons. So you can bring this back now. This can attack is all 17. <laughs> Look how many attacks you've made in this battle phase. It's This is criminal. Uh, and then you get to quick synchro again. And you make your trident dragon. Uh, and you get to destroy two cards. Now it attacks twice. And the field spell will double this attack. So uh, now it attacks three times for 6,000. To 6k. 6k. And 6k. And then you get to revive this because you attack three times. And you can attack again for 3k. How much damage did we just do? Take a look. Let's add it up. 17 plus 15 plus 16 plus 17 plus 26 plus 3k plus 26 plus 17 plus 6k plus 6k plus 6k plus 3k. 37,400 points of damage. The crazy part is, is this is actually an OTK deck that can play Prosperity, which is mental because that's unintuitive. Prosperity should guarantee you live the turn, at least if your opponent's not going for some infinite loop type combo, but you're putting in such crazy numbers of damage here that you can comfortably kill through Pot of Prosperity. So why does this deck have potential? Well, the biggest thing here, if you'll notice, you can play a very large number on engine. The deck is pretty streamlined. It 
it can play pretty well with a low number of cards, like one card combos. But then also with redundancy's sake, you don't have cards that kind of clog it together too much either. Right? If you have this plus this or uh, this plus this, you have ways of going about it that are still pretty good into disruption uh, and aren't useless either. You're not just drawing like two Snake Eye Ashes, which do nothing. And that is important in a deck when there's very hand trap heavy format. You want as many cards in your hand to be live as possible. It does a lot with very little commitment. Uh, it also doesn't really require bricks in the deck because pretty much every card is functioning. Uh, probably the worst card by itself is Fedora. You could argue to play one of this. And, you know, I may do that if I build this deck in the future. However, the OCG lists I've seen have all been playing too. Uh, and I especially do that if you play Desires in this deck. And I think this deck can play Desires. Going second, this card is great for value, consistency. And if your opponent makes you go first because they don't want you to do the ODK stuff, then this is a great way to combat that. It gets you load up on hand traps. Uh, and if you draw multiple extenders, maybe enhance your field a bit. One of the only bricks in the deck and you probably wouldn't play with Desires is Blaster with Goldsark, which is another consistency piece. Goldsark, Blaster, and then add any Fire Dragon to connect your hand. So it's just Rota for the deck. And then obviously Blaster can be used on Floodgate sometimes. And Magnum is just a random hand trap, but also as well when you're going second, because you should be blinding second on this deck normally. Then you get to search a Tempai in the end phase, as well as serve some sort of disruption with the Magnum here. That's fantastic, right? Like you have a real strategy here. We got, look, 18 non-engine or 19 at the call by. Uh, and you can, you know, fix this up a little bit so you can still go a little bit further, as well as prosperities in the deck to complement the non-engine slash engine you have. You could shift up how you approach the non-engine to be more breaker based, depending on what you feel is needed for the format. But that's a whole separate issue for if there's a ban list and what's going to be played in the upcoming months. Some other options that we see some people play are cards that up you go first, especially if you're expecting your opponent to make you go first. In the OCG, a popular one is Kaiser Coliseum. However, that is not legal for us. So not going to be an option. The cards like Heat Wave are very viable. Uh, you can even play stuff like Rivalry of the Warlords. These are all Fire Dragons and Rivalry is fantastic versus Snake Eye decks. So that's a solid one as well. Uh, you can play Field Spells like Necro Valley, maybe uh, that maybe aren't the best, but, you know, do something. Uh, you can also play Shifter. Shifter is not great in this deck, but it does force them to pass back, so especially uh, if you go first to Shifter, you can shift to them and just pass. And if they can't kill you and they pass back to you, you have a battle phase. Fantastic. Uh, and that's all you really need to secure the win all of the time. But a deck cannot be competitive if it can only go second. It does have to have some viability going first. So let me show you some of the plays you can do when you start. Okay, so this combo is going to require some two card combination of your Sangan and then one other card in your hand. Uh, this is kind of where I like Desires a lot because it can, with between the Desires and the Prosperity, the discard off the Sangan Manor doesn't feel as bad. And it just loads you up with hand traps more because if I'm doing this combo, I don't want to be discarding a hand trap. It feels kind of bad. Uh, and I don't want to discard follow up too much either, right? Because I still need to be able to play next turn. It's not like this is some broken snake eye combo. This is a very fair turn around we're about to do. Uh, but anyways, yeah, we can start playing here. This is a Stratos. Search the other piece we don't have, especially from the hand. Neat. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here is Synchro Summon for Ancient Fairy Dragon. So this does require you to play another field spell in the deck. Uh, so the one I am playing is also fresh from Le Legacy of Destruction, but uh, I didn't show it to you guys. So I'll show it to you right now. It could be any field spell uh, besides Sangin Manor because Ancient Fairy Dragon got the errata that has to add a field spell with a different name than the one destroyed. So you can't add another Sangin Manor. That'd be ideal here, but it's fine. So we get this card because it's something that's playable going second uh, and then going first. You'll use it for the combo. The card is called Where There's a Will, There's a Way Out. Uh, during the main phase, the turn player can excavate cards in the top of the deck up to the number of cards their opponent controls. And if they do add one of the excavated cards to the hand and then place the rest and one card from their hand on the bottom of the deck in any order. You only use the effect once per turn. And during the end phase, if the turn player excavated nine or more cards this way, you can shove all cards in the opponent's field and grave into the deck. Second effect, like it almost never happens, but if it does, the opponent doesn't negate it, then fantastic. You like win the game with the spot. The main thing here is it's like a kind of met product prosperity that makes terraforming give you a little more options as well going second. And you can just dig for consistency for the right breaker you need or for the right end trap you need, depending on what engine you have. Or it can just get you a 10 pie card if you're missing it all together. This card's not fantastic. I want to play multiple of it, but it does let you do this Ancient Fairy Dragon combo. And you can do other plays without doing this type of setup, but I like the setup a lot because it does you know, a decent amount of stuff for very little. Uh, so anyways, here we use the, the row to get the Debris Dragon Fedora here. And then Ancient Fairy Dragon Special Summon from hand again. Uh, and then bring back one from Grave with Fedora because it's on summon, not just when it battles. And then you can synchro these again and summon uh, your... Sangan, Rise Dragon, Biden Dragon. So this one will revive again. Uh, what's important to know here is making level seven, you can actually do some other plays. What OCG is doing is they'll add Secret Village to Spellcasters off this. Make shooting Riser Dragon, send a level four from Neck to Grave, so Riser becomes a three, and then make Nirvana High Paladin. 
Uh, you could also make a Baron here if you sent to level four. So you can send like a Shuffler to the grave and, and summon Baron that way. Or you can go for like send Necro World Banshee if you want to zombie world your opponent and then make Baron or in the mirror, Electromagnet Turtle, I guess, to make Baron. That could be an option. You know, there are there are different ways to go about this, but this is the one that I like is being the most generic right now. Uh, so I don't do the extra field spell stuff because I don't want to play some bad field spells in my deck either. I want something a little more flexibility. So yeah, just this. Uh, and then bring this out. And again, because this is a tuner, we can synchro these off for ultimate Dizalkin. And the reason you have to play another field spell here uh, is you need to set a card. Now, if you don't need to set a card, or if you have any other spell in your hand you can set, then you don't actually need to search off this and not a huge deal. Uh, but here you set a card. When a card is set, you special summon a level seven or eight Dragon Tank from your extra deck. So the best one here is going to be Crystal Wing. It's just an Omni Negate for monster effects. And then you got two dragons up, make a Radix Seal. So. You got the two negate, you got the negate and the bounce here, which is fine. And you should still have other cards in hand to be interrupt. Uh, and this is where desires is nice as well, because then you'd have an extra card in hand, right? If they're fighting off like two hand traps plus follow up plus negate and a bounce, that's like kind of hard for them to do. It's not like anything crazy for turn one, but it's solid. Now, there is a little more to it than that, because Heretic Seal Special is a dragon for the deck. If you are in the battle phase, like your opponent's battle phase, this summoning a Tenpai is actually pretty good. Because then you can start doing some more combos, right? You can bring out like the Fedora uh, and then revive something uh, and then synchro into a level seven, like Moonlight Rose or into Black Rose Dragon and then get more effects off and keep comboing. Uh, and if enough attacks are declared, you can revive the Biden Dragon and then pop it back as well and it comes back. And then if you combo that with the synchros, you can make a Baron or, uh, you know, you, you do have options. The point it's not limited to just this. Uh, you could also play other dragons specifically when you think you're going to go first, like post side. Cards like Quackamere Dragu or Aether Dragon. Uh, I don't know the full name of that card, but cards that you can just summon off of Erratic Seal that give you a little more oomph than just summoning a Tempai. But even summoning a Tempai is not the end of the world because of those bonus abilities. And yeah, that brings us back to what the deck looks like here. You have quite a bit of flexibility with the extra deck because neither of those combos really require that much space. Now, it's not a ton of free space, but you do have options to use stuff like Typhon, Underworld Goddess. Uh, and be flexible, use Karthik Prosperity relatively safely. Uh, and because of the not having a problem with the damage lock, you know, you're very comfortable going for that. There one is one other way to play this deck, uh, and I'm not talking about playing board breakers, uh, and I wanted to show it off as well. It is something that isn't as mainstream, and at least in the OCG, isn't the version that's being played. Uh, however, this is the one that's tier one right now. Uh, and this is a board breaker style rocket uh, dragon link tempi deck. So the reason why you'd want to play this is these cards don't really have restrictions on them, really just the level seven synchro, which is gonna set you up for uh, dragons only, but in a dragon link deck, that doesn't matter. Now, the one thing is with Tracer, is it'll lock you with the darks from the extra deck, uh, and that does shut off some of your plays uh, with the, the Tempai cards. The main point here is it gives you a little more extension going first, especially when I'm playing against like Snake Eye, uh, in the main deck at least, they don't have a searchable out to Borland Dragon. People aren't playing, what's it called, Subversion right now. And I'm, I'm kind of drawn to that fact where if I can summon this, I should be able to live a turn and then next turn the Tempies will kill them. Uh, as well as just these cards are solid going seconds, but specifically like Boot Sector Launch is relatively good into a field because it revives and grave. And it means you can set up these multi-body setups, committing zero cards, including combinations of tuners uh, and good statting that you can use for like a Dark Charm or for an SP to kind of navigate your way into easy lethal shots. Another reason I wanted to try this though is Metal Tronios, another new card coming out of Legacy of Destruction. Uh, this card is one of the most hyped cards of the set, but it's surprisingly not doing much in the OCG. So what it does is you target a face-up non-token monster if one controls, which will monster in your hand, the deck, or extra deck that is two more of the same type, attribute, and or attack, uh, and its effects are negated. And if you do negate the targeted monster's effects, then if the two monsters have the same name, you can banish both face down. Um, your opponent can activate the targeted monster's effects in response to this card's activation. So this is really good, right? This can just turn off Barons, it can turn off IPs. Uh, you really want to sit, like navigate it to what the format is, and it can also act as removal at the same time. However, what I'm drawn to is if you can pick something with two of the same stats as it, you can negate an effect like a Borlord Savage Dragon and summon a monster at the same time. Uh, so ideally what I have in mind is if you, your opponent has like the Snake Eye board with Borlord Savage, you negate the Savage Dragon and then special summon from the deck an Absa Router or a Tracer. So there you're acting as an extender and you're acting as a way to push your interrupts. And that is fantastic. And obviously if you draw going first, it's not just gonna be some useless extender, it's it's actually a trap card as well, right? Uh, especially if it banishes, right? If you can find something like a, uh, and you actually like a Promethean Princess to find space for whatever, you can banish their princess when they summon it and negate its effects. That is a huge swing in the amount of bodies. Or you can instead do it for a Hito or a Dark Charmer or a SP, whatever 
you need to fit in your extra deck. Now, obviously, at that point, it gets a bit tight, but there is viability there. And I just did the best shells in here because I wasn't sure really what I wanted. It's a very primitive build. The concept here I was going for was I wanted to use Metal Tronios and the fact that these are dragons and try to build this deck up a little more. And obviously, doing this, you'd be a little more susceptible to hand traps. They also have more ability to play going first, and you could potentially do a lot more when you go second. I thought this deck really needs too much of a boost going second, but but it's an option. So I wanted to share it with you guys anyways. And yeah, I mean, that's what Tenpai looks like. Its play patterns are pretty simple. It's try to establish a bit of a field and enter the battle phase and do some crazy combos or make a solid field on the first turn. And where you go from there does depend on how many bricks or engine cards you want to start slotting in that aren't directly Tenpai related. But in Japan, this deck is seeing success, especially the hand trap version right now. It's able to play this extremely high number of non-engine cards while not being extremely weak to them itself. And as we see Legacy of Destruction be released in the TCG over the next month or so, this is a deck I think will have solid representation and top cut of the tournaments. So let me know what you guys think. Will this deck take over Snake Eye even if there's no ban list? Will it be able to keep on par with Snake Eye? Or will this still not be enough to dethrone what is a current tier zero meta? I've seen a lot of people react to my bandless video for the OCG saying I'm overreacting. It's not actually tier zero in the OCG in part because of the Tenpai deck. So I'm curious to see if that same will stand true in the TCG. This deck is strong. However, the turn one isn't fantastic. And I'm just concerned that when your opponent knows you're playing Tenpai and forcing you to go first, maybe too much of a hindrance to really deal with. Let me know down below if you feel the same way or if there are any innovations, any plays that I missed that were super important to go over in this overview and what other changes you would make to the deck list. Anyways, that's all for now. I'll see you all next time. Peace.